Welcome to episode 147 of the Muck Podcast, a member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hadamia. And I'm Hillary Doherty. Oh, <laughs> oh that is so newscastery. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, you know, let's pump this bitch up. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I was talking yesterday about going to Ireland, and um, my friend who I was talking to, uh, he was like, well, you better have a fucking ticker tape parade when you show up. I'm like, God damn right. If I show up to that airport and no one is there with signs. And there's not a fucking parade of fans to greet me like I'm the Queen of England. Woo! Although Ireland, they would not they would not greet the Queen that way. No, no, no. Greet, greet me like the goddamn famous podcaster I am in Ireland. Oh my god. I just finished <laughs> speaking of Ireland and Ooh. I tried to do I cannot do the Ireland accent. It's, it's very difficult. Um I just finished season three, the season, the ending uh-huh. of Dairy Girls. Oh, I haven't. I watched I the episodes of the first season. Dairy Girls. Yeah, it's great. Oh my god, so fucking funny. They're so funny. Mm. They are just the best. Yeah, the best. The Good best. show. It was so enjoyable. Well, oh, let's my love. Going to bring it all down. <laughs> let's do it. So there's a couple things. First of all. It's early voting. It's early voting, but let me tell you something that is a very funny story. And it's very much like, this is what voters are like. Oh, and it's about my, mo- my mother. Oh, no. So my mother lives <laughs> in a very a little city inside Fort Lauderdale. I don't want to get into the yes. city. I don't want to get into the, the candidates because we know all these people. Yeah. But um, she says to me, you know, she calls me and is like, what about this person? What about that person? Not, right. not particularly her city. She knows all those all those folks. But like, you know, whatever, county, you know, uh, judges, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, the nonpartisan seats where you're yeah. like, and, and those, uh, the, 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 the charter questions. Yes, and, things like that. Yeah. So she says to me, <laughs> she says, well, I, ha- uh, I, I went to fill out my ballot and I said, great. And in her city, there's, there's two like city commission seats open but there's three candidates so in that city the two top whoever gets the two the two candidates get the top majority of mm-hmm. votes gets the seat yeah. gets the seats on the city commission it's not broken up by district right, 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 right. citywide so she had two candidates in mind that she was going to vote for but she was driving to the grocery store uh one day the day she was filling out the ballot and she looked over and saw this nice young man putting signs up And he looked up at her and he smiled and he waved at her. One of these, it was one of the candidates. And you know what? It, she loved that he smiled at her and it made her happy. And so she changed her vote and is voting for him instead. And knows nothing else That is the mind of a regular (laughs) voter. That's all of the work that these candidates put in, that the volunteers put in, that we put in. All of it goes out when someone's like, Hi! Smile and wave. That's all I have I'm to do. The queen's wave. Do you yeah. see that? That's it. Well, it's like this. Oh, oh it's not the queen. Yeah, the queen waves like towards him. She's like this. That's all they What's have the to do. What's the Italian wave? I, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do? Oh. I just feel like they grab their balls and like, what are you going to do? Oh, my God. But that's all the voters are listening. Like, that's the thing. If she said that to me, I could not stop laughing. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like, like she's an older woman, like I get yeah. it. Like maybe it just made her feel happy for a moment, but it was like all this person had to do was smile and wave, and she's like, "I'm changing my vote." Well, I it's fucking I, insane. I told you with my dad when he would go vote. Well, now thank God. Um, well, hopefully this year they'll allow it again mm-hmm. um, because my mom had to say like the language they don't have language in Italian. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. So she oh the ballot. Yeah, like yeah. can I come in? And last year she had to sign a document and whatever they let her do it. So she's like, hopefully they'll let her do it again. Because otherwise, my dad looks, if he doesn't know anything, whatever name sounds Italian, that's the one he votes for. <laughs> Anthony! <laughs> Anthony sounds like a nice boy. Yeah. Hey, Tony. Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Marie, that sounds like a nice, <laughs> that's a nice girl. Yeah, dude, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> This is what I'm saying. But Italian, eh? It's, it's so like they do polls, and I'm like, poll schmoles. Are they waving and saying hello to people? Because <laughs> that's how they're going to get my mother's vote. Oh my god! So great. What so are we doing? I know. That's what I. What it, are we it, doing? I literally, what? when she said that to me, I was laughing. Why, but the why? last five years of my life flashed before yeah. my eyes, and I was, I was like, just all that work, all the time, just in the past two weeks that I've been walking around my neighborhood. Yeah. 
Keep putting up door hangers. Yeah, for what? For what? Linda better go wave, start waving at people yeah. on the corner somewhere because that's the one which is getting people's votes. Oh my god. Oh, uh, let me tell you something. I went to walk it for Linda. Be, I went to walk for Linda Thompson Gonzalez. Oh. Tina's got a whole bunch of Linda's stuff and just has is doing her entire name. I'm doing my How many? Time. How many houses? I don't know how many houses, but I've done three um, sections. Three, yeah, it's a yeah. lot. But it's I went lot. when I, so Tina's just going doing it on her own, and I went to an event where it was like all these groups got together yeah. to to walk for Linda. So Linda comes out, and she first of all, she's got the most beautiful skin I've ever seen. What in the fuck is she? I go, what is your skin routine? I mean, her skin is so smooth and beautiful. She does have clear good skin. and like like glowing. It's, skin. I was gonna say yes. It's I was like, girl. Anyway, she is so excited she's so pumped i was taking pictures of her and she's just yeah. doing this and i was just like i could feel like i'm already she, excited about do. this I race anyway but it. oh my god please oh please. my god she's just so electrified like enth the th enthusiasm it, cannot be curbed you know what where I mean? are we gonna be we need to be somewhere yeah oh please let's be together on election yes. also i was gonna say i'm gonna go vote after this and i hope i run into a chip la marca oh. but I, why don't we go vote together i don't i know you yeah. already did but we should vote together. And we should film it. And we should film it. It should be an event. <laughs> yes. It should be a, a, a social media uh, yes. oh my thing. God. Um, so this week we had the um, Monday night. We were at a meeting Monday night. But during that meeting, the Charlie Crist uh, DeSantis debate was going on. And we were getting like... Updates. So some of our yeah. friends in the board meeting were in, were on Twitter going, "Oh my God, he just called Charlie Chris an old donkey," which yeah. I, I thought was hilarious because you know my term for Charlie Chris is old grasshopper. Yeah, <laughs> but which I think is better. But all right, I saw an ad with Charlie Chris. I want Charlie. Charlie, yeah. I want you to win. I will I be voting you for you. I will win. be voting I for you. Today. For you. <laughs> yes, I but there was this commercial, <laughs> and I said. You know what? What are we doing? Yeah, you know, dude. He, I. He, he, he looks just like again uh, another candidate that looks like he's been plucked out of a Seinfeld episode. He's got yeah. the shirt tucked into the jeans and the belt, and he's like, "Hey, God, you know, it's just." And then brand new fiance he took out of the package somewhere. <laughs> and P.S. My that's what I call old grasshopper. It's the term of endearment. First of all. <laughs> And second of all, I, what I say, I want you to hop right in that governor's mansion. <laughs> Come on, boy, get in there. Yeah, like, please. I don't want an old donkey, I want an old grasshopper. Just hop the fuck in there and How, just put a whatever. veto, 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 veto. Well, do the, thing that, the thing that I'm so worried about is what I've been listening to um, on NPR. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, NPR. What a liberal you are. So liberal. <laughs> so, um,. The biggest worry I have for the state of Florida, and I was thinking about this, and I wanted to ask you. We clearly are, you know, red. You know, we've yeah. been pretending that we're purple, but it's no, like clearly pretend. like we're, we're, red. we're red. Yeah. So are we the type of red state that's like a Georgia or, or, or something that can be flipped blue, or are we Alabama? Oh, um, you know what I mean? Because we're Miami-Dade is gone. Miami Dade, they just said for the first time in 20 years, is now officially Republican district based on the votes mm -hmm. that are coming out. And that was like, it was sort of like Miami Dade and Broward were like the blue strongholds that could potentially flip the state. Broward on its own? Yeah. I don't think so. Right? I was just thinking, I think I was talking to Alfredo about this on Monday because of, um, or maybe it was Tuesday, I don't know, but I was saying, you know, we, we live in a red state. So then it comes down to this do we live in a red state where. We continue to fight because it's the thing to do, or do we just let it go, and to continue to live in Broward, which is blue, but right, right. but there is quite a bit of red, and, oh, and it's growing. It's growing. So they're coming um, after our commission seats in Broward. I think it's I think it's pretty clear blue. that we live in a red state. We haven't had a governor in over twenty years. That's a Democrat. That's a clear sign. I mean, but Miami that's the leader Dade, of the like, state. Flipping totally red yeah. is scary now. Lots like, of red states have blue pockets. It doesn't mean they're I not feel, a red but state. But I feel like we're the only blue pocket now. Like um, Broward is going to be the only... Well, and Tampa. So, so Tampa and Orlando, Orlando area are, are very much, very much blue. And well, they were, they were red, they're turning blue. So whatever right. they're doing there, maybe we should copy, but we're very lazy. The thing about Orlando and Tampa area is those Democrats there have sat they in bed fight. for a long time. So they've been, they've needed to do it. They've had to do it. Right. They've had to fight and they've got incredible leaders they've been able to uplift to get people out to vote for them that were independents or Republicans right. are turning to an Ana Eskamani or Michelle Rayner, right. right? And so uh, they're very lucky in that way. Broward is very lazy. We have a Broward Democratic Party who they don't do anything. And but, I know, yeah, God bless y'all. God it's, bless y'all. I know you comfort. think I know you think that you can sit for a, a year and a half 
a year and eight months and do nothing until right before the primary, but you can't do it. It's incredibly I mean, lazy yeah. and it's incredibly short-sighted. And what you're doing is you're allowing the Republican Party here to build. And you're not fighting for or, the candidates. And we're building benches. I gotta tell you, we could be building so many benches. They don't in build benches. They don't. They don't. They don't reach out to people. They don't build benches. I put comments. I put posts up about the Broward Democratic Party. And instead of Rick Coy reaching out to me and saying something to me, he reaches out to everybody else around me to tell me about why how I'm wrong. And that's oh, cool. That's cool. That's fine. What I didn't. Know yeah, that. that's fine. But here's the thing. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. The way that they're th listen. Okay. We have friends that are working with, with the party to well, try to get I them will, to change things, I, and I appreciate that. Devil's advocacy and there. I appreciate the things they that they're have, doing to try to do it. But they, they do things, things too. Things it's, out. it's too late. I was at the GOTV Center in Walton Manors. We have an LGBTQ GOTV Center, which is a lot of letters, but it's a good place. And there people go there to register to vote. You can go get signs for candidates or whatever. Candidates are holding meetings there. Fine. You go there and you can get endorsement cards, like Dolphin's card or whatever. Right. They have the Broward Democratic Party card there. And when I went to see Val Deming speak that day, I picked up the Broward Democratic Party card. It is a mishmash of, I don't know, there's no direction. If there's two Dems in a race, they are recommending both Democrats. Bitch, pick a fucking side. <laughs> I'm confused. And I'm a voter that is overly informed we're overly informed right but if i'm somebody who's just like okay i vote every year i don't pay attention to who's running who's in the primary whatever and i pick that thing up i'm gonna go i'm sorry i don't know what to do and so how are you giving how are you even have the nerve to print a card like that so take what is there one rationale? more second one more second do an endorsement process okay you are powerful enough you really are. You're the Broward Democratic Party. You should be the most powerful Democratic Party in the state of Florida. In my opinion, more power powerful than the state party. I will be so bold. That's how much power you have because Broward holds enough Democratic votes, six over 600,000, to win the entire state. Take that seriously, I beg of you. Take it seriously. Do an endorsement process. Put the fucking work in. Have a plan. Don't come to me in July, a month before the fucking primary, and then try to say, here's our plan for the next four months. Too late. It's too late. Take it seriously. The weight of the fucking cut, the state weighs on your shoulders. When women lose their right, it's because there's part, all of these things that happen in Tallahassee are in part because Broward isn't taking shit seriously. Fucking step it up. We are owed that. You have the power to make these changes. Put the fucking work in. Ooh. That's my rant about the Broward Democratic Party. Sorry. That's a beautiful rant. And, and here's the response. Well, come help us. Well, listen, bro. I'm trying to help the dolphins. I'm trying to help myself. I gotta, right. you know what I mean? Like, I'll help you make a plan. But you gotta, you gotta take it seriously and you gotta execute it. And when the old motherfuckers who are sitting there next to you go, those are how we do it, tell them that there's the fucking door. We're doing it a new way. Right. Let's go. Let's well, go. Come on. I'm, yeah. I mean, they, they. Do, do devil's advocacy. I'm gonna do my devil's yeah. advocacy. Please. They do, uh, I will say that they have been pushing, 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 get out the vote for a while. They ask mm -hmm. for volunteers every single, I get emails all the time, like, come help us, come phone bank, come do this, come do that. And, I'm wondering about this, like, why don't they pick one person? Is it, are they permitted? Are they not permitted? Like, what it? Yeah, it's their bylaws. I think their bylaws don't, they don't, because they don't have an endorsement process, but all of these but, things but can other, change. You can we change can, all of this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no law that says, nope. like, that, that uh, uh, they can't choose one Democrat over another, no. right? Nope. They're, like, well, for, on the state level, there's oh. nothing, you know what I mean? That's what I would wonder. Like, why wouldn't, why, like, why not? That's a good question. But again, Broward has the power right, to, to say to the yeah. state, this is a more effective way to do things. And right, or not, look at what other states are doing. Yeah. What are other states doing? I don't know, but the, these candidates have no support. And, and, and if you think you're supporting them by putting all of their names on the ballot, you're not helping no, anybody. No, because now it's just not helping anybody. Vote. Yeah. Oh, what did they put for the school board race? Did they put semen? I don't remember. I want to look at that. Yeah. I'm curious. Actually, I'll look it up while you're talking. So, um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I, I know she's not our favorite person, but, you know, another attack on this uh, Pelosi family. Oh, yeah, dude. And her oh, husband. I'm so glad you brought this up. I got something you know, to say about this. Her yes. husband in the hospital 
they're they're charging this man with attempted murder and he went in there yeah screaming screaming like where's nancy and like look Again, we are not like the biggest Nancy fans, but Jesus, no. I mean, even on a, a, a for a Republican, I would never wish anyone no. to go into someone's home. You know, we can rant and rave about the things uh, a, 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 an elected official is doing wrong, mm -hmm. and we can vote and we can go join an organization to try to make change, but uh, making change is not uh, doing violence to another human being. Well, the guy... That's not how you make change. Yeah, that's not things, how you make it. That, that's not... He's a conspiracy guy. This yeah. guy that did it is one of these nuts. And, and again, the people who are throwing these conspiracies out there, okay, they might be cuckoo, but the politicians that allow those conspiracy theories to fester and grow mm -hmm. and they do not condemn them, yeah. they are guilty. Absolutely. They are guilty. It's the same as the whole January 6th thing. Yeah. Like, they own no... Oh, they have no ownership in what they are doing. Nope. They're horrible people. They are. And so let me... Horrible. Let me read you what our good friend Chippa Marka tweeted yesterday at, at Oh, this. I saw this. Let me read this to you. Because, I saw because this then, and it because was then, shocking. Because then I'm going to play you some new commercials that Chippa Marka's I saw your. Uh, I saw out. this through you. You put, you yeah. put this out. This is what Chippa Marka, the moderate, who's not an extremist, who's not... um, And any sign of, par any side of party. I'm not a... I'm in the middle trying. He's very, 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 very hard trying to say he's not a part of the Republican Party yeah. because both parties are crazy and he's not one of those. Okay. That's the game. That's the fucking push now with Chippewa Marka. Right. But he goes up and votes MAGA. As if we don't see your your I, voting record, you fucking idiot. But the, the, And he's going to hold on to that no, don't say gay vote yeah. till the end of time. Go ahead. You still vote against trans children? Yeah. You vote against women? Those there's there are LGBTQ women, you fucking prick. Yeah. Here's what our good friend the moderate Shiplomarka Chipl tweeted. Very sad news for the Pelosi family. We hope for a speedy recovery. Maybe now they'll get tough on crime, theft, assault, murder, and no cash bail that has plagued a once great American city. And then it says husband of speaker. It has got the story. What? Yeah. So it's what? Nancy, it's the Democrats' yeah. fault, Nancy Pelosi's that fault, there's crime that uh, somebody broke into her house and uh -huh. took a hammer to her husband. Yeah. An 80-something-year-old Because we're not tough on crime. Give me a break. A once great American city. And that's like, what do, what do they call that? Uh, 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 what is that? Like Monday quarterbacking? What is this phrase? Uh, well, I don't know, but, but, I, but I retweeted you know it. I, mean? and I said, there's the moderate we know and love. Yeah. And I said, oh, he's not an extremist of any party? Checks Fox News. Uh, there's Chip right in line. Yeah. All Chip does is go and look to see, Daddy Party, but tell why, me what yeah. I should do. What, what should, how should I feel about this, Mr. Dad? How dare he even like make a list of all those? Because one, like this wasn't a robbery or, you know nope, what I mean? This it wasn't was, any of those this things. This was an orchestrated attack to murder. Yeah. An elected official. That's right. This is a man who was and mentally is ill. 82 year old. Which man, you don't vote no. for. You don't vote to give people no. mental health. <laughs> Right? And God, they would be condemning him if he, you know... Yeah, and the extreme party that you support. Thing. You know, somebody... I saw this great tweet, and this guy this guy said, Oh, my, my girlfriend's dad asked me who I was voting for, and he said, I'm not voting for any party that is supported 100% by Nazis and thinks and then tried to overturn the government on January yeah. 6th, and then it said there was silence in the room, so I repeated it. Good. That's the party you belong to, Chip. That's your party. It's the truth. You're supported by Nazis, yeah. bruh. You don't want to distance yourself from that? I mean, are you out of your fucking mind? Okay, so let's play the commercials that are playing back-to-back uh, -back -back in Broward County that Anthony Mann, I, our good friend Anthony Mann, who's now being attacked, uh, not our good friend, but whatever. He, hi, he works Anthony for the Sun Sentinel. He, he, he tweeted these, and of course, that little bitch boy, Corey, is like, oh, uh, y'all don't look at the commercial. You know, all right. So here's Chip. So, so what happens is Chip's being attacked. He's being attacked, so he's got to put his pretty wife out. She's, she's very pretty. She's, she, okay. she's very sweet. Good for her. She's now going to defend her husband. It's like... Uh, it, on a job that she this. completely benefits from. She's completely 100% benefits from this job, oh, right? She's the queen. All right, hold on. Let me play this. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. Wow. 
Okay. Dude, oh, oh, okay. dude. <laughs> first of all, first career of all, politician? Yeah. He's How long has he been, he's been on the Brower Commission? He, dude, he is a he's dude. The he definition was, of a career politician. He was first elected in 2002 to the Lighthouse Point City Council. 20 years. 20 years. That's a, that's a career, you stupid <laughs> fuck. I'm not a career politician. I've only been a politician for my entire career. Yeah. I've been a politician <laughs> my whole life. Are you out of your fucking so oh that's my the, god. So that's the first he's thing in his I his forties, right? Yeah. So like since his twenties. So I wrote is your career. I went line by line. I went line by line. Now they're going after Chip and I wrote, because of his voting record. He votes MAGA. Yeah. Uh, not a career politician, again, elected yeah. for the last 20 years. Chip has always put people over power. And I wrote, unless you have a uterus, and then Chip's a Catholic and doesn't care about you. Yes. And then I added a little story that uh, our uh, our friend of the pod, Anna Escamani, did a, an editorial this week. And she talked about how the Republicans in the Senate and Chip, Chip co-sponsored it in the House oh. put a bill out. That the tax breaks that they paid, but the tax breaks that they paid for by increasing taxes on everyday people, it overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly benefited a small subset of big business. So they gave a big tax of cut to corporations do. here in Florida, and they passed the the cost over to everyday citizens. That's not putting people over politics. No, you're a liar. And you're what you're putting lies in your wife's mouth. Uh uh, she is a grown ass woman. Who? Well, who? What did she say at the top? She's misinformed. What did she say at the top? I'm not into politics. Yeah, I'm not into politics, but it's I'm sitting. So I nice sit on boards. To not be into politics. Yeah, because I don't have nothing to. affects you. That's right, because I live in a nice house in Lighthouse Point, and I sit on boards. I'm gonna f completely resent, re regret doing all of this. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Yeah. Lamarca. But you're gonna catch shrapnel now, and you know why you're catching. By the you way, put the ad by out. By the way, is this true or not? Did I not have you cut something out two I did. Week, two weeks ago? I had Tina cut something out of the podcast that yeah. I was going. She caught some, some some shrapnel for me, and I said, you know what? After listening to it, I was like, we should take this out because she's not the public person. But girl, you now you're now you're making commercials. It's time. You completely 100% benefit from your husband being a part of a party that's completely co-sponsored uh, co by Nazis. You sit in a house in, in Lighthouse Point, wherever the fuck you live, and you benefit from it. I don't know if you have a job, but I know you sit on boards like the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And, and go around town to your parties and your galas and you stand by your husband's side and you think that no one, no one sees you. You think your girlfriends don't talk about you behind your back Ooh. and say, I can't believe Eileen is standing by her husband while we lose our fucking rights. And you think, what do they, they, they say to their daughters? Do you give their daughters hugs when you, when you see them knowing that your husband has taken their rights away? Is that what you do? You're okay by that? Good. Put your nice dress on and your pearls and make a commercial for your husband so he can hang on to the last two years he's going to serve the fucking uh, house. And you walk around here and hold your head high. I'm sure I'll see you today over there at the early voting. But you should be ashamed of yourself. Ooh. Ashamed. I'll tell you this much. I was married to a Republican who was a Trump supporter. But you don't see me walking around telling everybody I'm proud of it. I would not be doing commercials for him. I would not be helping him at early voting. I'd be ashamed of it. You should be ashamed. Ooh, girl. Fuck this. Woo! You put your Good wife on a commercial. Good. You put your wife on a commercial. She's now out in the open. Right. She's in the open. Well, people can comment on that commercial. Yeah, you put it out there. Just like we put this podcast out there. Please. I'm over it. You can just get the fuck out. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. And you know, here's the thing that's the mo the worst part. Even if Linda wins, we still don't have the majority. No. But I would know. I right. would know. Well, God, locally, it just would, you know. I'm going to bubble Linda's name so hard today, there'll probably be a <laughs> hole in the paper. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to I'm gonna support her so hard, it probably won't even pick up on the fucking ballot machine. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Speaking of the ballot machines... Um, I was having dinner with my parents, and my dad's like, you hear the latest thing? <laughs> and basically, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I love that. And he's like, I don't know, I just love him so much. Oh, my much. God. So he's, he, he's like, uh, I guess the latest thing is the conspiracy theorists are now saying that when you bubble in any Republican, or you, you vote for Republican, when it goes in the machine, it changes it to Democrat. Yeah, this is what Donald Trump was yeah, saying. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like what kind of lunacy? Like seriously, like also like 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 here's the thing. We people in the world barely have time <laughs> to do anything, but yet someone is there like masterminding this kind of scheme. Nobody has time. Most people, as we know, don't give a shit. But the worst part of this, here's the worst part. Nobody cares. This, they're they, nobody's taking but the these, time to but change, these conspiracy make theories, these machines. These conspiracy theories only come up when they lose. I know, right? It's so Like funny. when Donald Trump they beat Hillary Clinton, right. it wasn't a scandal. Leading up to that election, go back to yeah. 2018 oh or 2016. My God. Leading up, he's like, if I don't win, it was stolen, yeah. right? Yeah. But then he wins and it's like, you never hear about it yeah. again. But yeah. all those rumors start picking up again right before he's going against Biden. Yeah. And it's like, so it's the, that's why it's so, so ridiculous. Dumb. The They're machines so work when the Republican wins. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, fuck off. Wait, but isn't Joe Biden, who did they say he was? Jim Carrey in a mask and like... What? When he, yeah. They now are, believe that Joe Biden is actually Jim Carrey dressed up like Joe Biden. And like when he fell up Why the stairs... Why Jim Carrey? I don't know. He because fell? He's, there was one time he fell like like at the early start of the president. He was like, oh he not God. fell, but he like kind of like slipped they on thought a it was stair. Like a, a prank and they stunt. thought like that's Jim Carrey letting everyone know it's Jim Carrey. Because that's like how you know Jim Carrey falls. Uh, my life is so short. I can't. Can you imagine that there's people that are, that are, they got to have a string board. You know, someone has a string board <laughs> trying to figure out who's Joe Biden this time. Meanwhile, you know? it's a, it, all that, that string board shows is that they're insane. <laughs> they're fucking insane. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Are you ready? My heart is beating so fast. <laughs> Because here's what's going to happen. And, and I don't know. You know, I don't know if the Lamarckers ever see any of this. I don't know if they any don't. of them ever see it. And it's fine. But know this, that in about an hour when I go to sit down to edit this audio, I'm going to cringe and I'm going to feel bad that I said the things that I said. I don't feel bad about anything I've ever said about Chip Lamarca. I stand by it. Right. I always do. Especially when um, Dr. Oz said that. This oh my god! In a debate, this guy said he said that uh, that a, the the choice to have an abortion is between a a woman, her doctor, and the and local a, political local, elitists. Yeah. I don't think government should be involved in women's rights. But uh, but <laughs> in the same and I, I retweeted it and I said I don't want my local political leader in my doctor's office with me because he had the he had the <laughs> fingers. Okay, I don't regret any of that. I don't. I, uh, I'm taller than Chip. I've stood next to him before. <laughs> oh I know god. how tall he is. I got it. I, I, I got this. I'm fine with it. Except I don't like <sighs> these family members. But then I see the commercial and I thought, she's she's had the Kool-Aid. She knows this yeah. benefits her. Even if... And the fact that they're putting said, her in a commercial said, like that I don't speaking, want to do a commercial. Yeah. She's been in the commercials where she's like walking around with him. But the fact that she's actually sitting down and, and then trying to defend her husband because he's being attacked unfairly is so beyond what is actually fucking happening. And so... It is what it is. You know, what are you going to do? All right, I'm first, yeah? Are we good? Is that it? Yeah. Oh, by the way, let me just go back to Broward County. It's the oh. school board, um, they did Zeman. It's Zeman, oh, okay. Stephen Julian, and Rod Velez. Okay, but for District 5, they have Ruth Carter Lynch and Jeff Holness. Again, I ask you, how is this helping anyone? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <sighs> so, I'm first. Yes. Today, I'm doing a story. This is very sad, <clears throat> Tina. Oh, no. <laughs> but the end of it is so fascinating to me. I was looking for someone to cover. I saw this guy's name, and it was like, here's all these things this guy did, and he kept doing all these investigations, and I'm like, on this one person that I'm covering, and I'm like, why does he keep bothering this? What is he doing in this investigation? And then I realized this was a huge thing, and it's so gross what they were doing, the Republicans were doing. And so I was like, all right, I'm doing this story. Okay. I am covering <gasps> Former White House counsel, Vince Foster. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, so Vince Foster was born in Hope, Arkansas, and he was the childhood friend of Bill Clinton, at the time known as Billy Blythe. <laughs> uh, Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a character from an old novel. It does, yeah. it does. Oh, young Billy Blythe. <laughs> Did you see like a little Bill Clinton running around <laughs> with that big red nose? Oh. Okay, and like a fro. <laughs> That's our next t-shirt. Yeah. When we ever make like a, a big head on yeah. a little kid body with like overalls and a, and a lollipop. On a stick, yeah. oh, oh, lollipop on a stick. I'm writing it down. 
Clinton, a year and a half younger than Foster, resided in an adjoining property to Foster's grandparents, uh, to, to Foster's, and he lived there with his grandparents because his mom was in nursing school, Clinton's mom. Okay. Um, she later recalled, um, Clinton later recalled, uh, quote, I lived with my grandparents in a modest little house across from Vince Foster's nice big white brick house. Aww. Another Clinton recollection was that Foster was kind to me and never lorded it over me the way that so many older boys did that, than the younger ones, you know, that he yeah. was wealthy and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So in 1950, Clinton's mother remarried, and they relocated to a different part of Hope. Then around the late 1952, the Clintons moved away to Hot Springs. However, Clinton would return to visit his grandparents in Hope during in, in Hope's um, Arkansas during summers and weekends and holidays. And so he kept his friendship yes. with Foster and all his friends there. So Foster excelled as a student and an athlete. At Hope High School, he became president of the student council, and he graduated in 1963. He attended Davidson College, uh, graduating with a bachelor's a degree in, in psychology in 1967, and his father wanted him to join the real estate business, that was the family business, but instead he uh, attended law school. And after starting at Vanderbilt University Law School, he joined the Arkansas National Guard during the height of the Vietnam War to avoid the draft. Uh, okay. So to be closer to his guard responsibilities, he transferred to the University of Arkansas School of Law, where he was the managing editor of the Law Review. He received his Juris Doctor degree in 1971, graduating first in his class. Wow. Yeah. I mean, he went to Davidson. That's a good school. Yeah, it's in Georgia. And then he went to Vanderbilt, which mm -hmm. is another really good yeah. school. Yeah. Smart. And then, really smart and, and then Arkansas is good, too. I mean, mm -hmm. geez. So he, right. um, yeah, he met Elizabeth Braden, known as Lisa, during his sophomore year at Davidson, and they were married on April 20th, 1968, and they had three children together. In 1971, Foster joined Rose Law Firm in Little Rock, Arkansas, and in 1974, they made him partner, one of only nine in the firm at the time. He was the head of the Arkansas Bar Association Committee that oversaw legal aid, and as such worked with legal aid clinic worker Hillary Rodham. Wow, yeah. look at this little connection I know. happening. Is he the one that got them together? I don't know if they, he introduced them, but he was definitely friends with both <clears> of them. <throat> That's you know? so funny. Yeah. Foster, Small world. Yeah, Foster then initiated the hiring of Rodham at Rose Law Firm, where she became its first ever female associate and later their first female partner. Wow. Foster and fellow partner Webster Hubble were instrumental in overcoming the reluctance of other partners to hire a woman. Wow. Foster and Rodham worked together on a number of cases. And as Bill Clinton's political career gained force, Foster supported him, of course. Foster practiced mostly corporate law, eventually earning nearly $300,000 a year. Jesus. Yeah. I am in the wrong career. Girl. I say it all the time. Known for his extensive preparation of cases ahead of time, including the creation of decision trees, Foster developed a reputation as one of the best trial litigators in Arkansas. Hillary Clinton's memoir calls Foster, quote, one of the best lawyers I've ever known and compared his style and substance to Gregory Peck's portrayal of Atticus Finch in the 1962 classic To Kill a Mockingbird, oh, which is pretty high praise. Yeah. Damn. Oh. I know. In Bill Clinton's memoir, he characterized Foster as a tall, handsome, wise, good man, and writer Carl Bernstein has, has described Foster as tall, with impeccable manners, and in a formal manner, elegant and perfectly tailored suits, and soft-spoken. Oh. Yes. He, so he sounds kind of hot. Yeah. He's, like, he's, yeah, he's handsome. Like, like, he's like handsome. southern hot. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He's very handsome. Like, he's going to um, have his, like, cup of tea on, like, on yeah. the veranda out yeah. front. And, there is an actor. You know you what? Know, or lemonade. Like, no, he's going to have a glass of lemonade. <laughs> and he's going to be like one a of those, like, yeah, and he'll be in, like, a light color. Color tan, yes, of, like yeah, linenish, like seersucker. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh god, this is gonna, this is gonna, the laughing's gonna be bad in our oh, no. oh, oh no, oh <laughs> no. Dana. Oh, no. The ABA Journal reported that Foster was, quote, acknowledged by many as the soul of the firm, end quote. He appeared to experience only success at Rose Law. A partner later said, quote, I never saw a professional setback, never, not even a tiny one, oh, God. Quote. Oh, God. This is then the, tra is this a tragic hero? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Oh, God. The firm grew five times its size during his time there, and the Arkansas Bar Association gave him a number of awards, and in June 1993 would name him as its Outstanding Lawyer of the Year. He was also listed in the Best Lawyers in America book. His wife, Lisa, described him as driven to prevail, staying up around the clock to prepare for big cases, believing he would lose the case even though he rarely did. She later viewed this as an early sign of depressed behavior. By 1992, Vince Foster was, as the Washington Post later wrote, at the pinnacle of the Arkansas legal establishment. 
He was also an established figure in Little Rock Society, serving as the chair of the board of the Arkansas Repertory Theater and belonging to the exclusive country club of Little Rock. Oh, ooh, okay. Club. So now we know. know who this guy is, right? He sounds I like, know that was kind I mean, of heavy, but like, no, he we sounds need successful. To, yeah. He sounds like, I mean, he's a good guy. A good guy. Pro, pro feminist, Handsome. like feminist clearly, like wants to hire women, like good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good soul, like the soul of the of a yeah. law firm. Yeah. Jesus, right? Okay. Oh no. So, after Clinton's 1992 election, where he wins the presidency, right. Foster joined Clinton's presidential transition team. Okay. So once Clinton was inaugurated, uh, Foster joined his White House staff as deputy White House counsel in early 1993. I mean, how exciting is that? Very exciting. This was this was despite Foster's initial reluctance to leave his little light, rock life behind and come to Washington. There, he worked under the White House counsel Bernard W. Nussbaum, although Nussbaum would consider the pair to be co-senior partners. He was also joined with two other Rose Law Firm partners, William H. Kennedy, who served as his, his associate counsel, and Webster Hubble, who became associate attorney general. All right, so, so the Clintons are... Yeah, so the, yeah, so the, yeah, so yeah. Making their friends with them, right? Surrounding yeah, themselves with friends. Yeah, I mean, these friends. are people they know. And, yeah, and, which I think all presidents do, by the well, way. Well, of course. Like, you want to bring people on counsel that... You can trust. You know the him. best. Exactly, yes. exactly, exactly. And his wife worked for them. I mean, these are people who work together. He's yeah. the soul of a, of a law firm, so right. he's the high-ranking guy in Little Rock. Yeah. <gasps> oh, shit. So the Foster residence was a small rented house in Georgetown, Washington, in D.C., and Foster had difficulty making the transition to life and politics in Washington. Unlike some other Clinton-associated figures, he had no experience with campaigns or elected politics, um, electoral politics. His wife and youngest son were not with him. Having stayed oh. behind in Arkansas so the son could complete his senior year of high school. So oh, he's alone. That makes sense. He's a family man. He's alone to... now. And Little Rock versus DC. Yeah. That's like no. Two that's the right thing to do. Worlds. It's a senior year. It's only a year. Yeah. Right? I'm sure it's they're only visiting. A year, but still I can understand it. it's like sort of a fish out of water situation. You're yeah. from like a smaller community right, right. where you're the big guy and now and, you're and in DC the middle. is like a, a monster pit. Yeah. You know? Who, and who, who, who kind of a nice guy wants, wants, to go wants there. yeah. His initial role was in vetting potential administration appointees. As one subject of the vetting process later said, quote, I wondered why I was being interviewed by the guy who would be deputy counsel. Seemed his job was to find out how honest I was and what level of ego I was bringing. It's a measure of how the Clintons trusted him, end quote. But Foster found this involvement in vetting appointments caused him to be depressed and full of anxiety. Oh, no. Because he's got to judge people. Yeah. You know, he doesn't seem like that kind of person. Right. In particular, he blamed himself for the failed Zoe Bard uh, nomination. She was Clinton's nominee for a U.S. Attorney General. So this is this is where this story, like, for me... We could we could go the rest of the year to the to the end of December and cover every single scandal that happened during the Clinton administration. Yeah. Monica Lewinsky aside, right, right. You can. There were so many things because the Republicans had the had Congress at the time. Remember, we're talking about right. we're talking about this is New Gingrich, yes, right. And so they were trying to pick at the Clintons for everything. Every nominee he put up. For everything was being torn apart, right? right? This is so, their strategy, though. The Democrats yeah. don't... Well, maybe now they might do it, yeah. but they didn't do it then. No, this was the start of it, yeah. right? And the Clintons were like their number one target. Um, and so Zoe Bard was put up, and she withdrew her name from consideration when it was learned that she and her husband had hired undocumented workers to serve as her chauffeur and nanny, and they didn't pay taxes or social security for them as employees. Now, they paid for their papers, like for them yeah. to come in or whatever, well, but it doesn't look good. So Foster thought... I feel like probably everyone was doing this in D.C. at the time. Probably. But he thought that Baird uh, had been justified in following her lawyer's advice regarding the payment on taxes for the household employees, but he had failed to anticipate the political backlash that led to become what was becoming known as Nanny Gate. And it blemished the early days of the administration. So, so there now was, he feels guilty. Yeah. Oh, and get then out, they, get and then out. They put Go two, back to Arkansas. They put two other Politely women. Politely declined. Yeah, and they put two other women up. Um, La, Kimba Wood and Lonnie Gagnier, Gagnier okay. as also for U.S. attorneys. And they both also had to back out because oh, of other things no. that came up. Of like cases they had worked on or whatever. For whatever reason, they were putting... And they, remember they ended up putting in... Um, from Miami, what's her name? Oh, for, oh, 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 uh, Janet Jan 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 Reno. Jan yeah. yeah, so she Jan ends up Reno. becoming Attorney General, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, she was, yeah, you know, except Waco, which I'd love to cover, too. Um, oh, so he had to. Oh, here's another thing that happened. He had to resign from the Country Club of Little Rock once it was, like, put out there that it was an all-white membership. Oh, guy. And that became a political issue for the administration. So it's well, another thing. Like, I it just mean, keep piling what, up on him. 
Like, Why would see... he belong to that? Well, you know, it's it's not. I, I, you're okay. True. 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 He's giving money. You true, know how expensive true, a freaking true. country club is. Okay, absolutely. I agree. It was 1990 something. Come on. You're right. Um, as deputy counsel, Foster was also involved in a range of other matters, including preparation of executive orders, analyzing the legal effort of various policies, examining international treaties, discussing the ramifications of the authorizations of use, for use of military force, and authorizing expenditures within the White House. So he's like all over the place with the work he's doing. He also worked on placing the Clinton's financial holdings into a blind trust. He handled oh, the Clinton's no. Madison Guarantee and Industrial Development Corporation paperwork and also several Whitewater-related tax oh, issues. God. Remember Whitewater? Yes. Another amazing... Have we covered that? No. no. Another, um, And he was involved in all of that. I remember that. So it's another thing that he was like... <laughs> Involved in. Oh, he worked 12-hour no. days, six or seven days a week, no. and although thin to begin with, he began losing weight. On May 8, 1993, he gave the commencement address at the University of Arkansas Law School, his alma mater, and said, quote, this is part of his speech. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a little long, but it's like, Jesus Christ. He's supposed to be encouraging people, right? <laughs> he's like, get out while you can. Get out. He's like, don't get do out. It. Don't ever move to D.C. <laughs> so he says, quote, the reputation you develop for intellectual and ethical integrity will be your greatest asset or your worst enemy. You will be judged by your judgment. Treat every pleading, every brief, every contract, every letter, every daily task as if your career will be judged on it. There is no victory, no advantage, no fee, no favor, which is worth even a blemish on your reputation for intellect and integrity. Dents to the reputation and the legal profession are irreparable." End quote. One faculty member listening to recalled telling another that it was, quote, the most depressing <laughs> speech I've ever heard in both content and manner. <laughs> it's fucking awful. It's fucking awful. Don't make a awful. mistake. Yeah. Don't make one mistake. You'll like never be over. Be to, yeah. <laughs> but this is also like kind of, yeah. like his wife said, like, he was always working hard because he didn't want to fail, doesn't want to right, fail. And right. it's, he must think in his, in whatever his, how his brain works, that if you fail, there's no coming back. And well, that's just not well, the case. It's not reality. And if he's in this administration where they're picking apart everything, where it's like everything you've yes. done, they're like, uh, oh, here's a piece and of evidence. Uh, oh, yeah. here's and a piece of evidence. And it's not just like if you lose a case in Arkansas, right. it's like, all right, well, we'll try again. In D.C., it's splashed on every single national yeah. global paper. And it's, it's like a spotlight on your failure. And yeah. as someone who never wants to fail, it's this is huge and wow. not wow, wow, good. Wow. So mm -hmm. four days after this, he gives this commencement speech, the White House oh. travel office controversy erupted. Another controversy. So briefly, it began in May 1993, and when seven employees of the White House travel office were fired. And this action was unusual because executive branch employees typically remain in their posts for many years. So uh, through administrations, through, yeah. okay, right? So it's, so not, it's like... not an office where they come in and go, all right, now all these people, you yeah. know. So this is something that was was odd that it happened. And the White House stated that the firings were done because financial improprieties in the travel office operation during previous administrations had been revealed by an FBI investigation. Critics contended the firings were done to allow friends of President Bill Clinton and First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton to take over the travel business and the involvement of the FBI was unwarranted. Heavy media, which happened. There was a travel agency that on during the campaign for president, Little Rock, Arkansas travel agency did all the travel arrangements for the campaign. They then hired them to come in and be in the travel office. Oh. So that happened. They fired these seven people and said, oh, we have friends who do this. And that's not them. cool. That's did not, not cool. Not a good not look. Cool. Not a good look. No, no, no. But wow. Here's another instance of yet again on this podcast, we might be liberal, yeah. but we can call out bullshit behavior yeah. for the party that we are affiliated with. I am not. Unlike PS. Republicans. I'd like to also state this. We've also said this many times. I'm not a fan of Bill Clinton. I think he's a fucking creep. <laughs> He's a creep, A1 creep. Yeah, he's a fucking adulterer that I, to the, listen, it's one thing to be an adulterer, but when you're getting blowjobs in my fucking Oval Office, <laughs> I got a problem with you. And then you fucking lie about it. Go somewhere else. I got Go a problem. Hotel. I got a problem with you. You use your power to your advantage in the fucking White House that we put you in, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Bill Clinton's a creep of the utmost level. Don't like him. Fuck off. 
Heavy media attention forced the White House to reinstate most of the employees in other they jobs should. and remove the Clinton associates from the travel and, I role. mean, that's like a really shitty thing. Yeah. These are people that probably, like, this is their career, yeah. you know, in this office and, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and that's cool. Like, and right away, like, that's the thing that, that people hate about politics, right? And yes. it's all this nepotism and favoritism. Yeah. It's not right. This is in May it's of 93. Right. They get in. Remember, he's elected November 92. Yeah. He comes in January 93. Yeah. This is five months later. Give me a break. We already have Nanny Gate. We got this. Like, what the fuck, bro? White yeah. water's bre- brewing. Oh, God. Okay. We don't have time. So, <laughs> That's what I feel about the Broward County School Board. I watched the school board for the last six or seven months, and I go, are they able to get any work done? It's a goddamn circus. It's a circus. And now it's even worse with these five appointees. But it's like, oh, these five appointees. You know what I mean? Four, it's like four, four, four They got to get out. But it's like such a fucking circus. I feel sorry for everybody there. Like, can you just get some work done, please? I don't know. Anyway. Ugh. Foster was the target of several critical Wall Street Journal editorials in June and July 1993 with such titles with titles such as quote who is Vince Foster, Vincent Foster. He became quite upset over the travel office matter and the possibility of a congressional hearing at which he might have been called to testify, you know, disliking the public spotlight and having continued weight loss and Just insomnia. Quit. Quit. He considered he considered resigning his position but feared a personal humiliation upon returning to Arkansas. Who cares? I know, but who it's cares? a man. I, well, it's and I get ego, it. right? Well, and, and we know who this guy is now, right? Right. So he doesn't want to come back tail between the legs, being like, "Hey guys, yeah, here I am." It's not for me. Five months in, so what? Struggling Just with depression. I miss my kid. I miss my family. Like I don't like yeah. DC. Like there's a million things that you could say. I know. Struggling. People are going to talk anyway. They're probably talking now. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. True. By the way, can we talk about how cute fucking Tina is right now? Hi. Oh my god, bitch. Look at this, look at this shoulder. I just saw, I looked over saw your shoulder. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling with, all right, let's get dark. Oh no. Struggling with depression, Foster was prescribed the antidepressant medication Trazodone over the phone by his Arkansas doctor, and he started taking. Over the phone? He started taking a low initial dose, dosage. The next day. Oh, no. July 20th, 1993, Foster was found dead <gasps> in Fort Marcy Park, a federal park in Virginia, and uh, he was 48 years old. Oh, my God. Dude. And he's got his boy graduating. It's so fucking sad. An autopsy oh. determined that he was shot in the mouth and no <gasps> other wounds were found on his body. Foster was holding the gun in his hand. Oh. An autopsy and subsequent investigations later confirmed that Foster had died by shooting himself once in the mouth with a 38 oh. caliber Colt revolver found at the scene. And a draft resignation letter was found torn into 27 pieces in his briefcase. Oh, no. And this just is resign. This is what the letter oh. said. <gasps> they put it back together. Girl, oh, hello. This is the no. muck. We're going to give it to you. Oh. You ready? Yeah. It's several, like, sentences. Okay, so it says, I made mistakes from ignorance, inexperience, and overwork. I did not knowingly violate any law or standard of conduct. No one in the White House... This is his resignation letter. Okay, so he was planning on resigning. This is not a suicide note. This is just like, here's all these things I I need to get out. Okay. The second one said, No one in the White House, to my knowledge, violated any law or standard of conduct, including any action in the travel office. Um, There was no intent to benefit any individual or specific group. The FBI lied in the report to the AG. The press is covering up the illegal benefits they received from the travel staff. The GOP has lied and misrepresented its knowledge and role and covered up of, of, of a prior investigation. The usher's office plotted to have excessive costs incurred, taking advantage of cocky, I don't know what that is, and HRC, which I'm assuming is Hillary Rodham Clinton. The public will never believe the innocence of the Clintons and their loyal staff. Wow, w- what a statement. Yeah. The WSJ editors lie without consequence. I was not meant for this job or the spotlight of public life in Washington. Here, ruining people is considered sport. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's very clear. Wow. Leading up to this, we know this is a suicide. Right. Close case, right? Right. But because it's under the Clinton administration Everyone. and the Republicans have Congress, now... We are going to investigate this for years. And the family, his sweet wife and their three children, for years have to put up with conspiracy theories oh and investigations that never fucking end. Oh my God. Never end. And this is a part of the, of the story where I was like, what in the fu-? I don't remember any of this, first of all. Second of all, it's like, what the fuck is going on? 
This is crazy. Wow. So because of the political climate and the drive to destroy the Clintons, the Republicans took what was a clear suicide and exploited it for political gain. Although police found no evidence of foul play, several tabloids and newsletters speculated that Foster's death may have been a homicide possibly involving the Clintons themselves. Oh my God. Who was so a very go. close friend of them for since he was a child. So this is wild. Yeah. Like this is where it starts, right? Like, and here we are. You know, decades later, Pizza Gate, Pizza Gate, the Clintons the are, are the pedophiles. Clintons. Like, like this is incredible. Yeah, like it is incredible. Like that, that this is the 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 onset of what we see today. All you need you to know? do is give people a kernel of something. Right. Wave at them when you're putting a sign up, right? All you need to do is give them a yeah, kernel the of seed. a thing, and they will take it. And our society, because we're humans, and we're like. You know, we've talked about this before. We're, we're, what, what is it called? Uh, what am I thinking? You know, you, you can, you can manipulate us yeah. so easily because we're humans. We're not yeah. machines. And so you give us one thing and most people are like, well, that sounds crazy. But then you've got people who are like, oh shit, you buy a cabinet off of Wayfair and oh, there's a child my. inside of it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's so fucking insane. It is. It's insane. So here we go. Oh, this poor so guy. So these invest, there was five official or governmental investigations into Foster's death all concluded How much money is that this? he died of suicide. The first investigation was conducted by, of course, the United States Park Police and in okay. whose jurisdiction the death was well, in that 1993. Be, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Because of Foster's position in the White House, the FBI assisted in the investigation, as did several other state and federal agencies. The result of the investigation was released as a joint report from the Department of Justice, FBI, and the Park Police on August 10th, 1993, so a month later, and it stated, quote, the condition of the scene... The medical examiner's findings and the information gathered clearly indicate that Mr. Foster committed suicide, end quote. End of story. No. Investigations by a coroner, independent counsel, Robert B. Fisk, in a 58-page report released on June 30th, 1994, also concluded that Foster's death was a suicide. They had an independent counsel look into wow. this. I Again, mean, I like, would love the bill. I want. I would love yeah. to see the that was a of year. all of these investigations. That it's taxpayer yeah. money. A year after. Took a year There's for that. better things to be doing with money yeah, what's and time. This, yeah. What's this 58-page report? The report made use of FBI resources and incorporated the views of several experienced pathologists. It, it concluded, quote, The overwhelming weight of the evidence compels the conclusion that Vincent Foster committed suicide in Fort Marcy Park on July 20th, 1993, end quote. A pair of investigations by the U.S. Congress found that Foster died of suicide. One was by Representative William F. Klinger Jr. of Pennsylvania, the ranking Republican of the House Government Reform and Oversight Committee, oh, who reached this conclusion in, in his findings on, that were published on August 12, 1994. This was in the same time that the, uh, the Robert Fisk Independent Counsel was yeah. doing the investigation. They're doing like, the same why? investigation! Why? The other was They just by, want to keep it in the news. Yeah. The fourth one was by the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, wherein both the majority Democrats and minority Republicans on the committee developed findings that reached the same conclusion reports on January 3rd, 1995. Wow. Uh, two years later. So... Despite all of this, theories of a cover-up persisted. However, some of which were uh, brought on by this thing called the Arkansas Project. So the Arkansas Project was a series of investigative press reports funded primarily by conservative businessman Richard Mellon Skyf, who also is a lunatic, uh, that focused on criticism of then-President Bill Clinton and his administration. Skyf uh, spent nearly $2 million on this project. And what is it like? Just digging into yep. past governors. A stuff lot of the like girlfriends and the girls, the women that he was fucking around with, um, were were all like found in this. Okay, and then all that stuff was given to like Kenneth Starr mean, when Kenneth Starr was brought in to investigate Whitewater, and that's how the Lewinsky thing comes out, and <sighs> blah 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 blah. Right. So after a three-year investigation, Whitewater Independent Counsel Ken Starr released a report on October tenth, nineteen ninety-seven, also concluding that the death was a suicide. <laughs> A final investigation led by the pro special prosecutor, Kenneth Starr, also concluded there was no evidence to support the claim that Foster was murdered. Starr's report addressed several additional questions about physical and forensic evidence that had previously fueled speculation about the case. So he's actually even taking into account, by the way, white, taking into account, Whitewater, he did this because 
uh, Foster was an attorney for the Clintons on their Whitewater property investments. That's right. why he looked into it. But, uh, okay, so the report established that Foster owned the handgun used in the suicide. He confirmed the body had not been moved from its position prior to its discovery by police. The report concluded that, quote, in sum, based on all of the available evidence, oh which is God. considerable, the OIC, which is the Office of Independent Counsel, agrees with the conclusion reached by Every official entity that has examined this issue, Mr. Foster committed suicide by gunshot in Fort Marcy Park on July 20th, 1993, end quote. Wow. In response, Sheila Foster Anthony, Vince Foster's sister, said she agreed with Starr's findings, but criticized his investigation for having taken so long, thus contributing to the existence of, quote, ridiculous conspiracy yes. theories proffered by those who with a profit or political motive, end quote. Right? Wow. So the inclusion. Wow. No, so this, you know, wait till you hear this because you're going to fucking blow up. The inclusion of Foster's death in the Star investigation and the length of time it took was in part due to the role of Star Associate Counsel Brett Kavanaugh. What? Dude. Uh, dude. Oh, <laughs> wait till you hear this. Kavanaugh's role in this, in this became controversial two decades later during his Supreme Court nomination process. Now, I know because what was happening when he was nominated, we were talking about... Um, the, the women. The, the yeah, girl that, that, that was the okay. thing that was yes, for me. Absolutely. But this was part of it, too. So here's what happens. After a thorough investigation, the first independent counsel investigation by Robert Fisk, right, concluded in 1994 that there was nothing to the conspiracy theories and that Mr. Foster suffered depression right. and he killed, killed himself. But shortly after the Senate report was released, Mr. Kavanaugh convinced Mr. Starr to reopen what he called a full-fledged investigation of the foster matter telling his colleagues as justification that quote we have received allegations that mr foster's death related to the president and mrs clinton's involvement in whitewater and other alleged scandals end quote wow because i think even then brett kavanaugh was like under the thumb of like these well, right apparently so yeah how old was he then oh he was young there's i got a picture of him. yeah he's beginning. gotta be yeah. like you know a newly fledged yeah attorney so to two last things in 2004 the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in National Archives and Records Administration versus Favish that the pictures of the scene in autopsy should not be released. So oh. somebody was fighting to get pictures in 2004. What is it? People were obsessed. Like, like, family I think because of her running for office, like her wanting right. to be president, like they wanted to use these photos in a way to like, sh like you know what I mean? Continue to smear yeah. this family. But here, how about this? This is the end and it's fucking insane to me. Oh my god. The suicide was nevertheless continued to fuel speculation. Then President uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump made news in 2016 when he remarked with the Washington in an interview with the Washington Post that Foster's death was very fishy, end quote, and added, quote, I will say there are people who continue to bring it up because they think it was absolutely a murder. I don't do that because I don't think it's fair, end quote. You just brought it up to yep. shit. This is what he would always do. Oh, well, I wouldn't it. say this, but this is what people yeah. think. 2016. Wow. And in response to that, Foster's wife writes an a, editorial. And I think it was in the New York Times. Forgive me. I think it was. And she was just like, "This, my family has never been at peace because every Republican they could use this. When the Clintons come up, my husband's death, oh. which was a tragic tragic death for our family and our children right. gets dragged back out into the news. It's, it's despicable, basically, that Donald Trump is doing this. And leave, leave my husband's alone. name out of your mouth. Like, leave what the alone. fuck? Wow. That's terrible. Isn't this awful? It's... It's the complete disregard. Yeah. The thing, though, that the guy in Arkansas spent $2 million mm. to dig into clinton's past like where's our democrat person doing this for desantis you know what i mean yeah for 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 matt gates like can we do we have a rich democrat that has of two million dollars to waste of on course an investigation oh, private girl. eyes girl private eyes i'm watching, watching you, you. they see something <laughs> and i'm watching you watching yes. you watching you hollow notes can get it oh okay <laughs> Together or separately, like whatever. <laughs> that mustache, honey. Ooh. Mm. All right, are you ready? Oh, yes. Today, uh -huh. I'm going to tell you the story of former Kauai oh. County Councilman oh. Arthur Brune. 
Okay. So Arthur Broom won a seat on the Kauai County Council in Hawaii, but when he deals drugs as a side hustle, oh, for fuck's sake. Broom's career goes up in smoke. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What the fuck? <laughs> this story was so funny. I mean, it's sad. It's sad, oh, but it's no! So our story takes place. Of course it's know. sad. Yeah. I mean, it's not like totally sad. Not sad like it's your story. Tina. But... Okay. Okay. So our story takes place in Hawaii in Kauai County, which mm. covers the islands of Kauai, Niihau, Lehua, and Kola or Kaula. Very good. I, yeah. I tried really hard to make sure I Do you think there's any them. part of Hawaii that's ugly? No. Like you can say Kauai to me and I'm like, I bet it's fucking gorgeous yes, there. Like amazing. do you even, there's never a sentence that like <laughs> Hawaii's just so dog shit ugly. Like there's no, no way you're ever going to no, say that, right? And your beaches and yeah. trees and, oh. Yeah. Oh God, beautiful. So I couldn't find much on this guy as far as background, um, but Alan Paracini wrote an article about his connection to Brune and there he noted that Brune first ran for a council seat in 2014. And then again in 2016, mm. I found an old article from the Garden Island that announced Brune's 2014 run and quoted him as saying, quote, I just want to make a difference. All right. Oh, no. Big deal. But Paracini also <laughs> noted that Brune had some early arrests, oh. one in 2003 and the other in 2004. So the 2003 arrest had to do with felony theft and computer fraud which he served 10 days for. Okay. <laughs> and Paracini explained that the 2004 arrest was due to domestic abuse, Ooh, possession bah. of drug paraphernalia, uh -oh. and attempted assault and resisting arrest. Holy shit. But after a plea deal, he ended up having to serve just two days in jail. So he doesn't spend a lot of jail time, but he's got this background and then he, he's running for office in like 2014. So mm -hmm. of course, like okay. this past is going to roll back up. This, this, this right now we have a question. Yeah. Is there ever a time when there's a candidate who has been arrested that you would be okay voting for? Like what, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Yeah, I think you know what I mean? Like you go, you go, okay, maybe they're reformed. Right. 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 I feel, I feel like if it's, you know for minor I mean? but things. So, but I hear this and I go, changed. this doesn't sound good. Assault, yeah. domestic violence, like, I don't, I don't yeah, think no, so. Assault to me, like, like, if it's any violence towards a woman, like, I'm sorry. I I'm can't out. forgive that. I right. can't forgive it. I can't vote for it. Even if it's been, oh, it's been 10 years. I don't but, care. You know what it's, I mean? It's, like, it's there's a, something else there. There's something that shows with yes. temper. Yes. You know what I mean? I can't. If it's so other it depends on what they're arrested for. Yeah, and if it's minor things when someone was like, you know, maybe a, a young kid. kid, like 19, 20 in college, like some yeah. kind of, but if it's rape, if it's assault, oh, if it's violence, on. if it's anything like that, like I'm out. I don't know. <laughs> well, so, you, don't think, you don't have to make an excuse. You're absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> and the abuse that he, that domestic abuse was for his, it was at the time his girlfriend, but later on she became his wife. Oh, right. Um, okay. Okay. And the drug paraphernalia was for crystal meth. Would be like, good? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So it's not like, oh, he was just like smoking a joint somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's right. a hard drug. It's a hard drug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, leave, up the, leave up the ante there. So. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a and little bit. Pericini also noted that during his election campaigns, Brun... <laughs> It's a lot. <laughs> Crystal Beth is a, a lot. lot. <laughs> um, that he was he was open though about his past arrest. Like he wasn't well, trying to hide it. Yeah, you have to. Be and his past part. drug use, and he claimed to have been sober for at least a decade. So he's okay. like, look, this stuff happened. I'm sober now, and he was open about it. Okay. And uh, the other thing I thought that was fun is I found his old Q and A that like uh, it was the Honolulu Civil Beat did like a Q and A with the candidates uh -huh. in 2018 because he had you know uh, won and then he was running again and there it noted that he it was a no party affiliation and I don't know if that meant like he had no party affiliation or the seat was like an NPA seat okay because it was like a council right, right, seat right and one question asked about his communication with constituents and he said. I try to be out in the community at events and public meetings as much as possible. It takes an individual commitment from each public official to make themselves available. And we're going to see that he certainly made himself available to some of his constituents. Uh -oh. Provided them with things that they desired. <laughs> so, <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God. So our major incident. So Paratini reported that over the years, um, Brune, you know, in addition to those arrests, he also had several traffic incidents, minor things like driving without a license. And so the major incident ends up having to do with this one 
uh, well, he gets pulled over. Okay. Okay, so he gets he gets pulled over for some, like, it was like, you know, failing to stop or whatever, right? And a, a cop pulls him over. And um, the cop is, like, reaching in his car to, like, let me shut off the engine, and he... He takes off. So, like, the <gasps> cop ends up getting hurt, and, he, and like, they're chasing no! him down. And then he throws out a one-pound bag of meth out the window. What? <laughs> which, That's a lot. That's a lot. Holy shit. So, which the cop saw. Yeah. <laughs> leads to the 2019 arrest but they've been kind of like watching and filming oh, and recording no! you know, all this stuff that's <laughs> so, <laughs> the mind of a criminal will never it's, stop being fascinating it's so to great me. so several sources including casey harlow's reporting for hawaii public radio noted that while prune served on city council oh god as vice chair in fact yeah. he was also the kingpin for a meth drug ring on the islands. Like, oh my He was like God. one of the head guys involved no. in an entire freaking meth ring. Holy yeah. shit. Like working with gang members. Why would like, he run for office? What are you doing? <laughs> Why would you do this? I know. I mean, what? It makes no sense. I was like, what? Oh, no, you're making bank, bank and then you're, and <laughs> you're making bank and you're like, oh, it's Tuesday. Got another yeah. council meeting. Get I, the yeah. fuck out. What are you doing? Oh my god. So he and about ten others were part of this drug sweep and he, from he all loves, the articles. He loves politics. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, all the articles of evidence like he was the head guy. Oh so, my god, um, this is crazy. Yeah, so it was like so not only did he just sell these drugs, his supplier was allegedly a guy named Maliule Umo. Mm -hmm. um, Umu, I'm, I'm not gonna pronounce it wrong, but he was supposedly the head of a gang known as the United Samoan Organization, which is like a real, like, hardcore big gang. And this it sounds gang, like a real group. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is investigation. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, no. Organization. Organization sounds like a legitimate. Yeah, no, this is a legitimate organization, and this guy was involved as like the head of this gang. And then the gang was also it was a prison gang, and so <laughs> they were because I guess what happened is when like NSA and all that with like extra security and, and flying planes and drugs right, coming right, out, right. it got harder and harder for that. So they start working just like the prison system. Oh and so, my God. Right. So they're running a lot of drugs in and out of the prison. And so the, the Brune is involved in all this. Holy yeah. shit. And my favorite part though, is not only was he the vice chair when he got busted, he was also the chairman of the public safety committee. <laughs> like we're here to keep the public safe. Meanwhile, he's dealing meth to people. This reminds me so much. <laughs> this reminds me so much of your story oh early, God. early muck, early uh, muck with the guy in San Francisco who was getting awards for being like anti-gun. Oh, and he the was gun a gun, <laughs> and he was a gun runner. Yes, like yes. holy shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's just so what ironic. What was the name of that? With the boy? What was the, the we named the episode? Oh, oh, Shrimp Boy. Shrimp Boy. <laughs> Go listen to Shrimp Boy. That's a great. Tina's story was oh, incredible. Oh, so funny. So good. So yeah, you know, let's let's keep the public safe, but well, let me just send some folks some meth on the side. It's yeah, fine. No big deal. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh my god. And then wait, I said instead of breaking bad, they wound up breaking brune. Oh <laughs> Tina. Look at her. This is when she when she wrote so this at home. She was laughing like this. I to was, herself. I yeah. was. It was and, so her, and her husband was like, what the fuck? Oh my god, yes, yes. So um so from what I read in um this article by Harlow. The uh, Kauai cops started looking into the drug trafficking, and the more they dug, the larger they realized that the scheme was. And so oh they God. brought the feds in, which included AFT, the you know, oh the firearms, um, the FBI, and even Homeland Security. Oh. And so this is no joke. Like this is like a serious, you know, drug ring that they are trying to bust. And the investigation really went underway around June of 2019, and then, you know. Um, he ends up arrested in October, so you know they're they're following up with this, and they also found out that like not only was he selling the drugs, but he would trade sexual favors for drugs too. Wait, what? Yeah, like oh, you want something? Like oh, with women? Get, yeah. He, like, oh my god! Mm -hmm. uh, wow. So what the a other creep. thing that they alleged, they said like they're like, look, Brune doesn't have any respect for law enforcement. So, Clearly. And and the. the main thing that they cited was that when that cop reached his hand in to like you know turn off the ignition it resulted in harm to that officer's arm and according to khon 
The tapes later revealed Brune saying, his fault he got hurt. He stuck his arms in the car. The cop stuck his arm in the car is why he had this assault case. So he's just like, wow, I, like you know, like I'm not responsible for anything. It's his fault. That kind of what attitude. A, what an interesting human being this yeah. is. I can't get over this guy. So after the feds finish their investigation, they reveal their findings. Now this is so, sort of all told for everyone involved because remember, Brune is the ringleader. There's about 11 folks arrested who were associated with the crime, and the Honolulu Civil Beat reported that four kilos of meth like after they like seize everybody were seized along with thousands of dollars in cash like it's a lot oh my god so and they found that allegedly um that brune sold drugs for cash in large amounts to uh umu on at least eight situations so like these are like large transaction deals oh that's my happening. gosh so the charges were drug trafficking assault of a federal law enforcement officer witness tampering evidence tampering and firearm offenses so at the time of his arrest, the Honolulu Civil Beat reported that then-Mayor Derek Kawakami had this to say about Brune. This highlights the reality that addiction knows no bounds and does not discriminate. Mm. On a personal level, it has been difficult to watch what has transpired with Councilmember Brune's personal situation. This is a testament to the hardships everyone deals with in their personal lives and the repercussions of the decisions we make as individuals. So the mayor kind of saw this as a drug addict going to whatever means necessary to maintain their addiction. And that's sort of what he said, like, I'm this addict, like, I use this opportunity to keep myself in supply of meth, like, and so he really, made, that's, that's kind of what he was saying, but he's dealing like, Would you, wouldn't you know if he was a meth addict? I, I don't know. Like, are his fingers burned? I don't know. Like, but what are, are the they signs? like spaced the yeah. fuck out too? I, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't, so, know about, I don't know about drugs. Brune, of course, does not resign. <laughs> why, would, why would he? Why would he? Why would he? These motherfuckers never disappoint. And the thing is, like, so he, he requested to be, like, bonded out, and they, they denied that request. But he was earning $5,200 a month oh my on his God. salary. So he, uh, you know, he's, why would he give that up? So he's like, I'm going to stay on. I'm not going to resign so he can keep collecting money while wow. he's in jail. Wow, wow, wow. It's kind of messed up. It is messed up, but it's, you know, there's no, listen, he's a drug dealer. He's right. got no, no center. There's yeah. no moral center. And people weren't having it. You know, they were like, they started a change.org position. They're like, we got to get him out. Like wow. they were like really upset. Like, you know, the local community. According to Harlow's article, Brune pled not guilty to 10 felony charges. And even though he pled not guilty, the feds stressed that there was still a ton of evidence against him um, in the form of the wiretaps in the video. But then by November... So he's first arrested, not, oh, he's like not guilty. But then by November, like a month later, he pleads guilty to the charges. Lord. Because he was facing life in prison. Holy shit. Charges. And the deal originally was supposed to be for 15 years. Like he's like, let me make this plea deal. And the judge, um, he told the judge at the time, I got no excuse. I take full responsibility for it. I'm guilty of all charge charges, your honor. So he's like, okay. okay. Um, and then, like I said, like he basically said that he was doing this to keep like, keeping his own meth habit, it like helped him keep him in drugs. And according to Aaron Brady's Newsweek article, Brune's attorney, Rustam Barbie, commented on Brune's character stating, good people sometimes make bad mistakes. Arthur Brune for most of his life has been a good person. And it's like, well, he had assault charges, you know, and some people make bad mistakes. Like a bad mistake is maybe, maybe yeah. you sold yeah. A, a tiny thing. Like, you're a drug kingpin. Yeah, like, that's not a tiny mistake. That's not a bad yeah. mistake. These are plans that you've made. This is <laughs> like, huge. This is like huge. Like, you're running with a gang leader. Yeah. No, 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 no. I no. mean. Come on, bro. So, when he makes that original plea deal for the 15 years, though, uh, the Honolulu Civil Beat reported that the judge, U.S. District Judge Derek Watson, was like, no, 15 years not enough time, buddy. I'm rejecting that. So he's like, I, he rejects the plea. Oh, and shit. instead, um, May of 2022, he sentences him to 20 years in prison. Dang. Oh, this just happened. So yeah, it happened in 2019, but you know, it takes forever yeah, for yeah. these cases to go through. And Dang. I would imagine that 2020 probably like slowed a lot of things down. Right, right, right. And we're still probably dealing with like a backlog from that. Yeah. So U.S. Attorney for Hawaii, Claire E. Connors, had this to say uh, about Brune after sentencing. As methamphetamine trafficking continues to plague Hawaii as one of the worst crime problems in our state, the fact 
a publicly elected official let a criminal organization engage in such activity magnifies the seriousness of this matter. Yeah. And ATF uh, agent Jonathan T. McPherson stated, it is deeply disturbing that an elected official, particularly one who was the vice chair of the Kauai County pa Council's Public Safety and Human Services Committee, <laughs> would engage in such a pattern of lawlessness and disregard for the welfare of community. I mean, mm. you're on the Public Safety Committee. Imagine it's wild. sharing the Public Safety Committee, and then you're like... Oh my God! Do you have kilos uh, of meth that you're dealing with? It's <laughs> insane. It's so stupid. So, like with the aftermath, it was just like every. I mean, everybody ends up sort of all his associates are found guilty. And um, the one thing I thought that was kind of funny when he entered his plea, um, he shows up in court in a wheelchair with his arm in a sling. <laughs> It's like every I, great it's, godfather, yeah, like, god, like he's fellas, a, yeah, big all, of the, <laughs> all the, the heads of the family come in, they're dying. Oh my god! Oh, so, so, so good. When he was in that whole car chase, like he ended up in an accident, and yeah. in that accident, like he hurt. Um, it led to like the injury of a six-year-old and his dad. Oh like, my god! So, but he's in there, so he's like hurt from this accident. But it's like, come on, guy. Ooh, you're uh, trying to get some sympathy. Yeah. But it just made me laugh. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I found interesting is that Brune met um, Umu, uh, the gang leader, mm -hmm. in a prison re-entry program. And oh when Umu God. got out of jail, <laughs> Brune would hang out with him. But Brune would bring him places and introduce him, you know, like, hey, uh, you know, here I am with the gang leader, you know, like, and, and like to, to intimidate people and show people, like, look how much power I have. Like, what in the hell? Yeah, yeah. But it's weird. Like, oh, a prison re-entry, like, that's supposed to help people rehabilitate. Yeah. But they said they, yeah. they make a they make full friends scheme. and start, yeah, start committing <laughs> crimes together. Oh my God. So that's the story of the meth oh. peddling councilman, Arthur Brune. It's so good. I also love, <laughs> like, there's this thing where I say, I think to myself, like, oh. you're doing the, like, this huge crime, right? Oh my God. And then he gets pulled over and he decides to run. Like, in, I know. In what part do you think you're not getting caught in any I know. Of this? And they know who you are. Yeah. You're a public figure. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> Like, where are you going to go? Where are you going? Oh, where are you going to go? Man. It's ridiculous. But at least if you are if you know you're committing the crime, you know that you're guilty, just be like, all right, you got me. Like, what is this? Yeah. I don't know. Damn. I know. So good, Tina. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah. Well, listen, this comes out November 2nd. Ooh. So I just oh, want to gosh. remind everybody, if you go haven't vote. voted, please go and vote. Please uh, if you're in Florida, especially, <laughs> do me a favor. Really? God, so many vote states. Blue. Vote blue, please. I know please. you know that I'm not a fan of all the candidates on the ticket, but... We got to do it. If we can at least... Val Demings. If we can at least get... Val Demings, yes. But oh if we can God. at least get Charlie Crist... Oh, my God. To hop his grasshopper ass into the governor's mansion. Can you imagine if we had Crist? We could stop stuff. So... We could, um, and he could and he could put a bill in that would he could pass something that would turn this abortion thing around a little bit. So, so you remember um, Michael Moore, Holy yeah. Columbine, and all that. And so during the 2016 election, I don't know if you remember, like he was coming out saying we're going to lose, we're yeah. going to lose, we're yeah. going to lose, like, and he's called it. Mm -hmm. He has recently come out to say that he, he the way that he sees it, he thinks it's going to be a blue wave sweep. That Democrats are sweeping. And I'm like, you know, he's been right every time. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> I, but, but, I don't know. The right now, as of as of yesterday, the can he Republicans be right? for early voting are 30,000 votes ahead of Democrats. And Democrats are always early voters. So I'm very and concerned. It's I'm concerned because midterms. midterms. Like, but Democrats never vote for midterms. And there's so many people that just, like, they don't care. Yeah. You know, they'd rather go. And they don't realize, one, it's so quick. Like, I went... You know, oh, yeah. listen, I feel like we're so busy. You know, we had a meeting Monday. Yeah. We had, you know, there's always a meeting. There's a thing that we're doing. We're, we're walking for candidates. We're doing stuff. And somehow I manage to go and vote. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I took my son swimming. Listen, I went for a run. I went and voted. I went back voting and picked him up. Like yeah, it's and so the, quick. But the early voting is such a great opportunity too. Like I'm going to, it's Saturday morning. Like I don't, I'm going to go early vote. Yeah. I'm going to go on like all the things I need to do today. But like the, they give you every opportunity to and really do it, it. And they open them at like seven in the morning. Like yeah. it's so easy to go and, and do it. And if you're not sure like who I need to vote for, like look up yeah. your local well, democratic party and they put <laughs> cards out. They put, I was so, you just know what I mean? Like, even though we have it for Howard, but 
I was just like, going to say that to you. I was look just going to say that I think that it gets overwhelming because you start going down the ticket and you see judges and you see yeah. amendments. Here's my advice. And I, I'm, I'm going to say this as somebody who's like, I, I, I have to know everybody I'm voting for. If you're not that informed, but you know DeSantis is bad, if you go and vote and on your ballot, you only pick Charlie Crist and turn because you're like, I don't know anything else. And Val Demings. Right? Yeah. If that's the case, I'm okay. Yeah. Just go do that. If we can have votes against DeSantis and yeah. you don't know judges, you don't know amendments, that's okay. Just vote for Kristen Demings and get the fuck out. Yeah. I don't hope I God bless you. Bubble. You don't yeah. have to bubble up anything. Yeah, you don't have just just yeah. do the races you know we can we can we need the help in. Yeah. And those are the races. If you don't know your house and don't or whatever, I'm okay. Vote. And I'm the okay other with thing that. is just, even though it's cringy inside right. my head right now, I'm cringing about right. it. Just go do it. To get them out. Right. But Please. don't randomly vote for things that you don't know. Right. You know what I mean? Leave it blank. Like, you leave can leave it blank. blank. But you can, it's not you a can test. bring yourself them in there. Yep. And you can, and you can look stuff up. She and you can bring ch- cards and cheats. Absolutely. Cheats. Like, take the minute. We're online every single day. You know what I mean? Like, just do a quick look. Look up your local vote. Democratic yeah. Party if you're a Democrat. And, get, and, and find the information that you yeah. need. And, and if they don't recommend judges because some parties aren't allowed to do yeah. that. Don't, don't do judges. I, I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah. But please vote for Charlie Crist. Please, please vote for Val Demings. And then leave and go have a night. And go reward yourself. Oh. You know, treat yourself. Because you just treated us to democracy that yeah. we need in the state. Oh, my God. Please. Because we're in so much trouble. I'm so afraid. I yes. Just, it's oh, bad. and then that, I saw, I saw, I was on TikTok. And they were saying that in Pennsylvania, uh-huh. that the Pennsylvania Republicans uh-huh. are now calling for women who have abortions to be charged with murder. Yeah. I mean, that's next. That's next, yeah. right? But then they were like, but also women are registering to vote in Pennsylvania in record numbers, and it's like, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, that's why we DeSantis, that's why DeSantis on the debate times. stage will not oh. ask, ask, answer the direct question of, are you going to ban abortions? He will not a- answer the question He's scared. because he knows, just like how Chip Lamarca knows. When I saw those ads, I thought to myself, wow, he's really trying to not be a Republican. Why? Because they've done their own polling. Right. And they know people are pissed about abortion and Republicans, everything that's happening there. He knows that. So what he's trying to fucking sell his sorry ass as is I'm a moderate who's not screaming at people. Meanwhile, he puts tweets out like that, basically blaming the Pelosi's right. for being attacked by a, a lunatic. And the voting record is case. what counts. The voting yeah. record. You can be silent all day, every day. He's a liar. But you check the boxes. And if, he, if you I check if, the boxes he, against women, that's what you yeah. do. And that's it. So you can sit and pretend, but your voting record is public. Yeah, we're not dumb. And you, tr- but that's what he's counting on. Right. He's counting on you not knowing. Right. He's counting on you not looking. He's counting on you being dumb, because that's the only way he gets reelected. Is that we don't look. We don't. And look. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So um, our dear friend Melissa Schiff had posted this thing about Texas about open carry and permitless mm-hmm. guns. That's coming too. And and that's coming to Florida. So we're gonna have a, a ban on abortion and we're gonna have open carry in the state of Florida. And we talked about it before of how incredibly dangerous that would be. And that story in Texas was very interesting if you read the article that it talked about how this man with a permitless carry, he, he and his wife got robbed at an ATM machine. So he's like, I'm gonna shoot the robber, right? Because good guys with guns, they beat the bad guys with guns. So he just shoots. And instead of it hitting hit the assailant who robbed him, it the bullet went into a car passing by and killed a nine-year-old girl. And then he was in court with his head hanging low because he feels awful about what he's done. So wild fucking can, west. It's going to be the why in Florida. Can you imagine nope. what it's going to be like? Nope. It's going to be crazy. Like for your own safety, for the safety of the children in this state. Like, this is insane, and I, I keep questioning, if we go to open carry and abortion bans, can I still live here? I, I don't want to live here anymore. I, I don't I, want to live I, here anymore. I don't want to live uh, here anymore. I cannot say that enough. I cannot say that enough. And I, and I, and I, and we love this I state. I love this fucking state. And it's but so, 
it's so mind blowing to me because when you don't live here and it's on the outside, and we talked about this last week, people on the outside look at Florida and there's no hope for Florida. Democrats outside of Florida are like, are you out of your fucking mind? You live in a red state. We need yeah. to wake up to the fact, like, what the fuck are we doing? Can we change the tide? Hopefully. I will be dead by the time that happens. Honestly, it'll be years and years and years and I'll be an old fucking woman by the time that actually happens. We are not Georgia. We don't have yeah. that kind of fight. We are lazy as fuck. And we let this motherfucker do whatever he wants. I know. And we elect people who give him whatever he wants. And then he's going to run for president. Oh. And then all you and motherfuckers who didn't help Florida get him out of office yep. can fucking live with that. <laughs> Yeah, they you don't live know with what King, it's like. little King DeSantis. Fucking Marco Rubio, that <gasps> little fucking his prick, ass by the off. way. Who, oh, I can't, one of his campaign workers, his canvasser, one of his canvassers was beat up in a neighborhood. <laughs> and they said, we don't like Republicans here. And they beat the shit out of him. Guess what? <laughs> He's a neo-Nazi. Oh, wow. He's one of the leading neo-Nazis in the Proud Boys in Miami. Get his ass. He but, should but, get his ass he's, But Marco Rubio doesn't mention that. That you have neo-Nazis passing out your literature. Wow. Punch Nazis. That's okay. Yeah. I'm 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 okaying that. Yeah. If someone cuz you know that loudmouth little prick. Everybody knows who this guy is. He was up there when they were trying to take down the statues in Hollywood, City oh, Hollywood. God. Like he's a fucking prick. Oh, I, you know he walked around those neighborhoods and was like, "Okay, you know, yeah, white power yeah. shit." And they beat the shit out of him in Hialeah. They Good. said not in our neighborhood. Wow. So and also they said Republicans aren't welcome here. Republicans and neo Nazis are together. Yeah, that's if what you it is are now. voting Republican. That's what it is now. You are voting to support Nazis in this country. Fuck you. Go fuck yourself. How dare you? We're waving Nazi flag and banners on highways in Florida oh and, in, and Los, in Angeles. Los Angeles. Get the fuck. And out the of here. literature that's going out. No, like, it's we don't stand for that here. And that's what I'm gonna say. To Chippewa, I'm gonna say your party is supported by Nazis, bro. Yeah. Time to reevaluate. Right. Figure it out. Reevaluate what you're doing. It's just, it's like, what is you know? I don't even know I why can't. I get so mad about Chippewa. He's got no power. I know. He's I know. A nobody. I know. I he's know. a nobody. But, it, but he symbolizes. To me, he does. He yeah. symbolizes what's wrong with the state and yeah. his local and. Yeah. To me, you know, more than he anything, could have a voice. It's he the could lies. have a voice. Yeah. He could be a Republican who legitimately stands up against his party. You could, you could really be you a could moderate. You could be a moderate. You're but not. You're not. You're yeah. not. So. Just because you voted against one, the, the don't, don't, uh, don't say gay, you voted against one thing, now you're a moderate, fuck yourself. Yeah. You're, and you Linda, motherfucker. Linda called him out on it when it was in committee. He let it go and he had his own little excuse for it. But give me a break. Yeah. You're a you prick. know what you're doing. You're a prick. You're no, you know what you're, and if his vote would have counted. Yeah. If his vote would have really counted, he would have voted with his party 100%. Yep. And if he was really proud of being pro-life, he would tout that in the commercials. You yes. would put that on your Twitter. But you don't do that. You don't talk about how you voted pro-life because you're a Catholic. As if that should matter. Sorry. Take your Catholic religion and shove it up your fucking ass. That should not step into the, the, the capital. Being Catholic does yeah, not step no, into true. the capital. And if you do that, you're not. You should not be an elected official. Like I said before, go work for the Catholic Church. Yeah, that's who you should work There's for. There's a lot of organizations that you can. Yeah, um, it's not being a lawmaker your because position. we don't all subscribe to your religion. We don't all follow that. That's you're true. supposed to represent everybody in District 100. And what's best for the people here. Not what's best when you get on your knees on Sunday morning and take the fucking, uh, you know, old wafer. Oh my God. That's not part of this. <laughs> that made me, the wafer in Dairy Girls, the, you know, the, the cuckoo girl, the, the yeah. tall thin one who's just like kind of like space cadet. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I wonder how many wafers it, it takes to make the whole body of Jesus. <laughs> Oh yeah, I said, I, that, so I, said that to my, I said that to my ex-husband this week. I was like, something about communion. He goes, the body of Christ? I said, I gotta go. I gotta go, time to go. How many wafers does it take to, to, to when you've eaten a full Jesus? <laughs> oh my God. It's so fucked. It's oh, true. by the way, go watch Vatican Girl on, on Netflix. Oh. Go watch it. Okay. It's insane. The Catholic okay. Church are fucking criminals. The end. Well, listen, The fucking end. I told you, like, we are... I'm, no. now, I'm now I'm now recovering it's Catholic. Fucked. Like I appreciate, mm -mm. you know, um, 
the where my, organization where my family is coming from but is built for years, by criminals. Yeah, and for years, for I mean, God, we can go back to the freaking 1300s, you know? Yeah. But for years, they've covered up pedophilia. Yeah. They've covered up That's, crime. You know. They've covered up rape. <laughs> And, and that is, alone, that alone, yeah. we should say, you know what? No one should have ever gone back murder, to church. Murder, murder. This is... No one should go back to But this is why when he said, I'm a Catholic, I'm baffled by that. Right. You're proud of walking around saying that when right. the organization, which is made up of humans who are flawed right. and, and criminals, that's what you're taking to Tallahassee to take my rights away? Yeah. My rights? You know, when I watch the video and I turn to the camera, I, I can feel it. Like, I, I know when I turn that... Everything's about to explode. <laughs> like that's the that's the that's the the thing he's clinging to. Yeah. To further do damage and criminal behavior. It's criminal to step into the doctor's office with me. That's violating my private rights as a, as a United States citizen. It's a violation violation of the Constitution for yeah. you to make laws like this. It is. And I have private medical right. I have rights right. to step into a doctor's office. We all do. And you want to use. Your Catholic religion, which is a criminal organization, to, to, to further do damage to me and take my rights away. Go fuck yourself. Yep. And on that note... Uh, on that note, I'm taking my rage into the voting booth like yes, everybody else should. Yes, let's do it. Take your rage to the voting booth. Oh, I love that. All right. All right. And bye. Bye.